sorry, I was on mute. I wondered why my picture wasn't flickering on the screen. I thought, what is it with my mic? But my mic was on blue. Then I noticed I was on mute. Sorry about that. Hope you've all had a nice day or having a nice day. All the kids are now back up, back at school. All the parents, you've got some happy parents out there. I used to love the summer holidays. I used to love all the holidays with my kids. I used to have parents go, oh, God, we've got the six weeks holidays coming up. Oh, my God. I go, really? You feel that bad about six weeks holidays, spending time with your kids? No. No. I miss them times where I used to spend my time with my kids like that. We go on, like, when my husband had days off from work, if it was in the week, or even on the weekend, if you had a weekend off. we go for bike rides, and I mean, we'd go out about 10 in the morning, nine, half nine, ten in the morning, and we wasn't getting back till about four or five in the afternoon. So we was out all day. Or we'd go, on, we'd go away on holidays and things like that. But a lot of people can't afford holidays, fair enough. But there are things you can do with your children which don't cost the earth. And some of them don't even cost you nothing. Anyway, hope, you, hope you're all having a nice relaxing day now that your children are back at school. Right, tonight I'm looking at the, the migrant situation we've got in the UK and it was something that I watched earlier on another YouTube channel and it got me thinking about this so I went online and I was doing some work and I was it, in a way it's I was gobsmacked, but I was also proved my <coughs> my opinion as right. What right, right? Okay. Why would you come across an ocean in a dinghy, pay a lot of money to come across in a dinghy? When you could, if you've got the paperwork, if you've got the passport, you don't even need paperwork, you've just got to have a passport or some means of getting onto a, a plane, right? And once you get off that plane, you come into customs, you stand there and you say, I want to declare, I want to claim asylum. That's it. Then they take you through the paperwork everything that is the correct way to do it right you'll get fingerprinted you get uh your paperwork is checked like your passport or your visas or whatever it is you've got is checked and you're welcome into our country okay so why would you and it's a lot less hell of a lot less to come by a flight than it is to come by a dinghy. Right? Now, I'm going to pull up the information here. Well, actually, I wrote it down. I did write it down. Yes, I did. Right? These people coming across on the boats has now come down from 4,500 euros to 3,000 euros, which in the pound, sterling pound, is 2,574 2, pounds. And 60p. Right? I'll show you how I'll 
ช้อนทะเลพังยันเอ่อจำเลยอันนี้จะเจอชอยคอมบอลจริงพี่เย่ฮีส Alright, I'm gonna share it with you. I can share everything with you. Alright. Okay, there it is. There they are in this little dinghy. Some are bigger than that. They've got dinghies. Coming over a lot bigger than that, and it says people smugglers have cut the cost of a place on a cross-channel dinghy by overloading them with migrants. A Home Office official has said the rate charged by criminals to reach the UK from France has fallen by about a third as demand has soared. That's nice of them, isn't it? Nearly seven thousand people have reached the UK in more than five hundred small boats this year. Now, this was done in twenty twenty, right? Four years ago. Now, if you think of that, like seven thousand people a year, like seven four in. Twenty-eight thousand. If you look at that, if you uh, base it on seven thousand people a year, that's twenty-eight thousand illegal migrants that have come into our country. Twenty-eight thousand. Cooperation between French and UK law enforcement has led to the arrest of one hundred. Suspected people smugglers in the past two months, they said. Hmm. Yeah. The Joint Intelligence Cell has also stopped about five hundred migrants from making the dangerous crossing. They added. It's. I'm now they're saying, when the crossings began to increase in 2018, people mainly from Iran and Iraq. But more recently, there had been an increase in people from African countries such as Sudan and Ethiopia. He said, "Some migrants who cannot afford to pay smugglers attempt to self-facilitate by acquiring their own boats. But this, there is a hardcore element of organised crime group who are running a financial model to exploit vulnerable people. Right? Now you look at that price, right? Where is it?" Where's that price again? There it is. Here. Right. What I might do, I might see if they've got a more recent one. Well, to be honest with you, I don't care if we've got a more recent one or not. It's still a lot of money. It's still a lot of money they are paying, whereas flights from France to UK prices. Right. You can get them as cheap. I've got one down here, seventeen pound. From seventeen pound, right? That was nineteen pound. Flights that's long down to France. Um, last minute cheap flights. Um. Yeah, here we are.
17 pound cheap flights from France to the United Kingdom. Now, why would you pay £2,374, right, to come across, risk coming across some dangerous waters in a dinghy, right, to claim asylum over here, when you could jump on a plane for a minimum £17. Right, £17. You can get a flight from France to the United Kingdom. What? And we don't just get them coming on the boats. We also get them jumping on into the back of lorries. And I feel sorry for those lorry drivers, right? Because they're the ones who get fined. If they are caught with any uh, people in the back of their trucks, oh, no, the, tr the people in the back of the trucks don't get fined. The drivers of the trucks get fined because in their, it's, the way they look, it's their responsibility to make sure no one, no illegal people are in the, no one illegally is in the back of their trucks. That's what they say, sort of like say. Right? Right? But why would you pay 3,000 euros when you can get a flight for 17 pounds? It doesn't... <coughs> <coughs> There's only one reason you would do that. One reason only. Spend all that money, and that is a lot of money. Right? £2,574. Christ, that would get you a nice holiday, wouldn't it? You? you know what I mean? And now paying that to come over to the UK in a dinghy. And in my opinion, there's only one reason why you would have a boatload of people Desperate to come over to the UK, but come over by the dinghy and pay that money. Because when they get over here, they've got no paperwork on them, no passports, no ID, nothing. And then they are processed, whatever they do, whether they process them or not. And then they're put into hotels, whatever it is, hotels, B&Bs. Yes, they're using B&Bs on the seafronts, on the resorts. Right? Now, these sea, sea, sea town places, I'm not happy with that because it's putting people off from wanting to stay, come and visit their seaside town, especially when they've got young children. They don't want to book into a B&B, a, a &B, I mean, bed and breakfast. Not even for one night. Not if they know that they take the chance on some unknown person who we don't know anything about. Taking pictures of their children, following them, harassing them. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't do that. I won't take my child there. So a lot of people, a lot of these seaside, seaside towns are suffering because of this. And yet they do nothing. The government is doing nothing to stop this. Right? Let's see if I can pull up a, uh, some, some videos. Right. Get that back up there. Um, let's go into the YouTube. Let's just see if I can pull up some news video. Right, they'll have the more updated because I know there's like quite a few that come across just yesterday.
Đấy. Right. This is two days ago. It says more than 700 migrants arrived in UK in 11 boats in a single day. Right? That is ridiculous. 11 boats. You know why the French won't stop them? Because the people who are the people who are the smugglers don't bring their boats onto land no more. They have the boats and they have the boats sitting out in the ocean a little bit. So you have to wade yourself out to these boats. Right? Some women can't do that, can't get there. So they are leaving without the women. They take the men, but they're not bringing the women. They won't wait for the women. Right? So let's just have a look at what they say on this channel. Let's go back to the beginning. This is Sky News. This was, was it two days ago? Two days ago. Okay. Let's bring you a bit of an update on those provisional figures from the Home Office that we brought you a little bit earlier on. They are saying this morning that 703 migrants were detected crossing the English Channel yesterday. Now, that would be the highest number on a single day since Sakir Starmer became Prime Minister and the third highest daily number so far this year. Uh, they are saying that the cumulative number of arrivals by small boats so far this year stands at a provisional total of 18,342. And they say that this is 13% higher than the total at the equivalent point last year, which was 16,170, but 3% lower than the total at this stage the year before that. And um, so the Home Office have put out these provisional figures saying that some 703 migrants detected crossing the channel yesterday these are pictures from this morning and uh if those are confirmed it'd be the highest number on a single day since kestama was voted in as prime minister right now we've got this one now on this one it says my Greek channel crossings top eighteen thousand for year so far and make two more Deaths. 18,000. Right? Is that since um, Keir Starmer has come in? I don't know. But you just think of what I just told you before. In 2020, it was 7,000 in a year. And I said, work that out. If you record, worked it out on 7,000 a year, you're up to 28,000 in four years. We've now gone from 7,000 a year up to 18,000 a year. So far, we've got 18,000 for year so far. Well, so let's listen to what they say.
<coughs> now that's 18,000 so far this year for a January, February, March, April, May, June, July. We're just coming into the eighth month. We're just in into the eighth month of the year. Steve Karma has only been Prime Minister just over a month. Was it 4th of July? 4th of July or June, something like that. It's just over a month or something, five, five weeks, maybe six weeks, he's been Prime Minister. And so far this year, 18,000 have come in. So you can't blame it all on Keir Starmer. But he's not doing anything to stop this. We're paying the flipping French millions to stop these illegal immigrants coming over. Now, you tell me, why would you risk your life on a boat to come over? Why? Get rid of all your paperwork. Why? And all that. Risk your life to come over on a boat. Instead of coming over by a plane. Right? For £17. Even if it was more than £17, say £30, £40, it's still a lot cheaper than €3,000. That's £2,000. I'm sure it said £2,574. It's the way I've written my five. I'm not sure if it's a three or a five. It might be a three. It might be £2,374. Here's another one. And this is Keir Starmer okay. doing a good job. Almost 5,000 small boats migrant, boat migrants arrived in UK since Starmer took power. That's in like five to six weeks. 5,000 small boats have been bringing migrants over. Why aren't they doing something to stop this? We haven't got the space. We don't have the housing for them. We don't have the housing for our own people. We've got veterans who've lost everything. Their homes, their, their marriages, everything. Sleeping rough on the streets. They've lost everything. And yet you, they can't get any help. But if you come over on a dinghy and you survive that journey, you get processed and then you'll be put into a hotel or a hostel. And this is what people don't agree with. Not the fact that they're migrants. It's the fact they are illegal. Now, I'm going to pull up some else. I'm going to type some else and see what it says. What are... Right, let's see what this says. Uh... I'm just looking. Because we know Keir Starmer has stopped that uh, where we were sending them, putting them on to a boat or a plane or whatever and sending them over to uh, Rwanda. Uh, See what they say. Uh, 
This is the Illegal Migration Act. Right, there it is. Illegal Migration Act 2023. These documents relate to the Illegal Migration Bill, which received royal assent on July 20th of July 2023. The Illegal Migration Act changes the law so that those who arrive in the UK illegally will not be able to stay here and will instead be detained and then promptly removed either to their home country or a safe third country. Well, I'm sorry, but I thought the ruling was if you was leaving your country because of um, war um, and all that lot, right? And you reached a safe country. That is where you were supposed to apply for asylum. Not to come across on a dinghy to the UK. And now, a lot of them are now going across to Ireland. They're getting on ferries or plane. Oh, they can get on a plane to Ireland or ferry to Ireland. But they can't do that to come into England. You don't see them getting in little boats, in these little power boats, dinghy power boats going over to Ireland. No, they go over on the ferries or they go over by plane. But they won't do that to come to the UK. Why is that? Anyway, the Act aims to put a stop to illegal immigration into the UK by removing the incentive to make dangerous small boat crossings. Okay. Speed up the removal of those with no right to be here. In turn, this will free up capacity so that the UK can better support those in genuine need of asylum through safe and legal routes. Exactly. Prevent people who come to the UK through illegal and dangerous journeys from misusing modern slavery safeguards to block their removal. Ensure that the UK continues to support those in genuine need by committing to resettle a specific number of the most vulnerable refugees in the UK every year. Now, so I heard someone say something the other day, I think this is good. We need a cap. We need to have a cap on how many be legal migrants we have come into our country. We have to have a cap, right? Now, what's upsetting me most is, because they're also implementing this in Scotland, is they are stopping the winter fuel payments to the elderly, right, who don't receive certain benefits. So if you're on a private pension, You've worked all your life, you've got your own pension, you've got a private pension, all that lot, and you're not getting any help off, off the government, you will not, they will not receive their fuel payments. But if you're getting the pension credit where you get the help off the government, right, then you'll get your payments. But what annoys me is some people might only be, and this is true, might only be, what, 1p, 5p, 10p over the limit, right? And they won't get their winter fuel payments. But they can afford to put these illegal immigrants, which they are supposed to be, it says here, removing the incentive to speed up the removal with no right to be here. They are, they are putting these people into hotels, B&Bs, you name it, at the cost of the taxpayer. Now, a lot of these pensioners 
or on private pensions or whatever, are paying tax on their pension. Right? So, all these people paying tax for work or their pensions, whatever, are paying to keep these illegal migrants in the country when really the government should be, hey up, nah, get them out of here. They haven't got the paperwork, they haven't got no ID on them. Send them back to where they come from, which would be France. Right? They want to come into our country, we've got no problem with that. But do it the legal way. Right? But they they won't do it the legal way because if you come in the legal way, hold on, let's see what it says if I can pull up anything here. Um Yeah, let's see, um let's close that. What am I looking for? I can't think now. My brain's gone dead. Um Let's type in procedure for claiming asylum. Let's see what the three ways of a ta- of of uh, uh, there are three ways of obtaining asylum. I like in the United States, I need the UK. So push in the UK. Let's push in 2024 20, as well. Right, this is from the gov.uk. Right, this is from the Dove Got UK. Claim asylum in the UK. Overview. You must apply for asylum if you want to stay in the UK as a refugee. To be eligible, you must have left your country and be unable to go back because you fear persecution. Fair enough. Find out more about who is eligible to claim. If you want to come to the UK for another reason, for example, to work, study, or remain with family, if you're already in the UK and want to remain with family here, apply for a family of a settled person visa. Right. Let's just go down a bit. When should you apply when you arrive in the UK or as soon as you think it would be unsafe for you to return to your... Your application is more likely to be refused if you wait. When you apply, you'll have a meeting with an immigration officer known as a screening. Let's click on that. You register your asylum claim at a screening. This is a meeting with an immigration officer where you tell them about your case. Uh, if I go back home, I'm going to get killed, right? Not because if I go back home, I'm, we're in the middle of a war, and if I go back home, they're going to bomb us. You know, you grown men, you fighting age men, get back home and fight for your country, right? Anyway, at the screen, and you'll be, this is if you come in legally. You'll be photographed. Have your fingerprints taken. Have an interview to check who you are and where you're from. Right? So they can, by doing that, they get to, they know where you're from, who you are, where you're from, everything. You'll be asked why you're on asylum. You can bring written evidence to support your claim if you want, as well as any other documents you need. Right? You'll need to say if you need if you or your dependents are taking any medication and give any relevant medical information. 
You can ask for a male or female interviewer, but your choice might not always be available. Screening at the UK border. You must tell a border force officer that you want to claim asylum. Your application will be registered and you will be screened. Ask for an interpreter if you need one. Screening in the UK. You must call the asylum intake unit if you're already in the UK. They'll call you back and ask simple questions about you and your family. You will not be asked why you're claiming asylum during this telephone call. You'll be asked if you need help with housing. Oh, look at that. There we go. This call might take up to 30 minutes. Yeah, I know I've been on the phone with them with the housing. <laughs> Tell the asylum and take uni if you need if you need any other dependents on your claim to be present at any stage of your asylum registration. For example, the welfare interview or if your child I need if your child and you need to be accompanied, you can have an interpreter at your screening. At the end of the call, you might be offered a screening appointment. <coughs> so really, this is applying for people who've come in without claiming asylum first. They're probably coming on a visa. Right? And then for oh, sugar. I kind of like it here in the UK. But now I've got to go home. I know. I'll claim asylum. I know. Claim asylum. You'll get a house. It's just said that. Do you need housing? You'll be asked if you need help with housing. Give them a tent and pitch it up in a field somewhere. Because that's a lot of what our homeless people do. They're having to pitch up tents. If you have nowhere to live, you'll still need to call the asylum intake unit appointment slide. They'll call you back and you may be told to attend a screening appointment or to go to a walk-in service and asylum registration location. If the asylum registration location does not know you're coming, you may not be seen. Attending your appointment. Because of coronavirus, attend your appointment alone or with an independent claim asylum with you. If you're helping a child register, then their own asylum, their own asylum claim, only you can go with them to their appointment. You must bring the documents you need for your application. Right? So if you're coming over on the boat, you've got, got no documents. You've got rid of them all. You've burnt them all before getting on the boat. Right? You cannot get financial help to, for travel to or from the asylum intake unit. Yep, right. I believe that. So, what I, I'd like to know what the screening process is for those coming in on the boats. Because here, it says if you register your, your asylum claim, you'll be photographed, you'll have your fingerprints taken, have an interview to check who you are and where you're from. Are they doing that with these? migrants that are coming across on the boats or are they just oh well, we've got uh 200 here right send him to this hotel oh we've got another 200 right send him to that hotel are we just doing that without screening them without getting any information off these people whatsoever like <coughs> the name the country the, the age like i remember a few years back there's a bit of controversy where there's men claiming to be children, right, who were going to school and sitting in classes with other 10, 11, 12-year-olds. But there's actually, you could tell by their face, they were not young kids. They were 
not teenagers, 16 plus, even 20 plus. You could tell, right? But because they had no paperwork, right? So telling, say, oh, I'm, I'm 13. You know what I mean? And then they're able to go and get our free education. This is what I don't agree with. These migrants that are coming over on the boats, they've got something to hide by coming over that way. Because who in the right mind will pay 3,000 euros to come across on a dinghy when you could get a flight for, say, £17? Pound? £17, pound, £20, pound, £30, pound, whatever. But you could get a flight and come into the country and be welcomed, open heart, open armed. You know what I mean? Who will come across on a boat? Only someone or people who've got something to hide. And that is the problem. You've got these people in these hotels and the the in the rat the, the uh crime rate is going up. Yeah. Children are being followed. They are being followed. They are being harassed on the way to school, on the way home from school, just going out with their friends. And on a Saturday, they're getting harassed. They are not safe. Because these people have come over on a boat and we don't know where they've come from, what their history is. Have they got prior history of stalking, uh, I'll, I'll just say the R, R ing, uh, the A word. You know what I mean? Just you can follow what I'm saying. I can't say the full words. Right? Well, I wish I could remember some of those words we use for those words. But I can't think of them. So have they got, hold on, I've just got to plug my laptop in. That's better. Right? So it doesn't make sense. Why they will come across on a boat, a dinghy. And why are the government not just turning these flipping dinghies back around? And saying, no, 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 stay on the boat, turn it around, go back. Just watch them at a distance in their big boats, in their big ships, whatever you call them. Watch them and follow them back until you get to the, where you've got the border of the French waters and their French and the English. You know what I mean? But why can't they do that? Instead of letting 11 boats come in on one day. You know what I mean? That is just... I'm trying to find... No. But why aren't they even following the Illegal Migration Act? Why are the government not following through on the Illegal Migration Act that had to go through the government, that has to had to go through the House of Parliament, had to go through all these other MPs and whatever, yet yeah, to be agreed? So why aren't they acting on it? This is the annoying thing about it. We have got laws in place. We've got laws in place to stop all this. And they're not doing nothing. You know what I mean? Just look all up what it says there. The Act aims to... One, 
put a stop to illegal migration into the UK by removing the incentive to make dangerous small boat crossings. Well, I'll give you an even bigger reason, incentive, that would stop them. Tell them, when you land on our soil, you'll get put back onto another boat, and if it takes three weeks to fill that boat, we you will be sitting on that boat for three weeks and then sent back to France. You will not be getting across any further. You will not be going into any hotels, any... It wouldn't take three weeks to fill a boat. It wouldn't. If you've just had 18,000 come across in one, five weeks, you could fill a boat in a week. 700 and something in a day. Yeah, that could fill a boat in a week. Just put them back on a boat and ship them back over to France. Because that is a safe country. They've got no need to come to the UK. They should be claiming asylum in France. But you see, they know France won't give them asylum. Why? Because France, they've got their paperwork, so France will be able to do all their checks on them. But over here, they've got no paperwork. We don't know who the hell they are, where they have come from. You know what I mean? It's okay arresting these um, people who are uh, taking 3,000 euros off these people each to come across. Yeah, arrest them. But you're just going to have five more behind them or 10 more behind them or 15 more people, these smugglers behind them, to take their place. You know what I mean? There's just going to be more people to take this place of these smugglers because it's big money they are making. They don't care if people don't survive. They don't care. They just care about the money. So it's wrong. It's not um hold on where I'm on. It's not a long life tonight because it's just about, I was just talking about which is the best way, what is it, boat or plane. Personally, I think I'd pay the 17 or 20 or whatever pound it was to fly across, right? And if I got refused asylum, because once you, once you step off that plane and you come through to customs, you just claim asylum straight away. They've got to put you somewhere. They've got to put you somewhere. Be it in, I don't know, a tent. I don't know. A big warehouse full of beds. I don't know. But they've got to put you somewhere as soon as you claim asylum. Because they've then got to do all the checks. So if, you come, if it comes back... A couple of weeks like, sorry, you're not getting asylum. You know what they do? They go, they go into hiding. So wherever they were staying, they leave, right? And they get jobs by where you got these certain takeaway places will hire illegal immigrants right so they get paid that money so they get they've got a job so they can pay for I don't know a room uh rent a house somewhere but they're off grid sort of thing the government don't know where they've gone because these there's no paperwork on them right no paperwork. They could use fake. Like, I've rented properties and all I've had to give them is, what, like, some proof, like something with my name on. Not even a photo. I can't remember what I've had to give when I've gone private. Right? But there are these people who will scam these illegal immigrants 
and say, oh, we can put you up in this house, and they call them HMOs, and they have to house them all to support occupying, and they rent rooms out to these people, to these illegals. So these illegals find a job, get a contact to somewhere to leave. <coughs> the government don't know where they've gone. Every so often they do a, a raid on these takeaway places and they find out like, their head chef and their other servers or whatever are illegals. But you know what they do? <laughs> this is the ironic bit. I've watched programs on this. I've watched them go in and do a raid, right, on, I don't know, let's just say uh, an engine takeaway. Um, I don't know. Can't remember. But they've gone in and they've done a raid. And they find they've got illegal migrants working there because when they're questioning them, these people have got no paperwork. The owners have no paperwork on them either. So they're paying them cash in hand. Right? It could be bare minimum money. Might only be 20, 30 quid a week they're paying them. But they're paying them cash in hand. So then they get took away by the police. Right? But, <laughs> this is the ironic bit, because they've got no ID on them, no paperwork, they they let them go, right, because they've got no paperwork on them, they've got no information on them, they've got no paper they can do about them. So the police are letting them go. So they came to the police station, questioning them. And go bye bye, and watch them walk down the flipping road. Those people are not going to go back to that restaurant. Those people are now going to go and find another restaurant that can get a job at. You know what I mean? What the hell? If you've got no paperwork, why don't you detain them and send them to one of these asylum seekers' uh, camps, whatever? I don't know. I'm going to look into this a bit more because this is all wrong. We've got too many migrants coming into our country illegally and it isn't fair there and only ones that are coming in le the legal routes. It's not fair on them because people look, oh, you're just a, a migrant, you're just an immigrant. You know what I mean? Yes, but at least they've come in the correct way. They've come in the correct way Right, they've gone through all the screening, they've gone through all the interviews, they've got themselves a job, they're paying the rent, they're paying towards the country, they're paying taxes, everything, income tax, you name it, they're paying it. And they love this country as much as we love this country. But it's the illegal immigrants that come into this country that do not love this country. They love it for one thing, one thing. That's the money. Stop giving them money. Stop giving them the houses. <coughs> because this isn't fair. Waiting list for houses is so long now because there's so many on the waiting list for council housing social network housing, anything, you know. And they are, they do, apparently one resident, one immigrant said they only get uh, £9 a week. I don't believe that. I don't believe that for one minute. Let's see if I can find some it. Right. Put that back up there. Oh, so done. Let's just see. 
hai mục mong ấy chứ đi 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 Ok, hold on. Right. He was right then, but this was when. Um, I didn't say. Asylum support, what you'll get. Okay. Yeah, as an asylum seeker, right, so as soon as you claim asylum, you can ask for somewhere to live, a cash allowance, or both. Housing, you'll be given somewhere to live if you need it. This could be a flat, house, hostel, or bed and breakfast. You cannot choose where you live. It's unlikely you, likely you'll get to live in London or South East England. Well, I remember... There's a family that was brought up to a lovely, I'm not joking, I would have died, I would have died to have gone and lived here. A lovely place up in Scotland. The views was out of this world, right? You know what they said? You know what these asylum seekers said? This is a place where people come to die. We don't want to be here. They wanted to be in London. They wanted to be in London or Manchester or Birmingham or places like that. They didn't want to be in these nice little villages and towns in Scotland. I thought, I've got no way of making a living. Uh, start your own business. You know what I mean? Open a calf. Yeah? Make your own. If you if you've got a wife, get your wife who can cook. Obviously, make your own desserts and things like that. Do something rather than stand there and moaning that you've been put in a place which is so absolutely beautiful, and you call you say stand there and say it's a place where people come and die. I would die to go and live there. You know what I mean? This was a few years back when I heard about that. Right, now we get to the the important part. The cash support. Right, all right. So, why is that not moving? Oh, that's why. <laughs> because I haven't shared it with you. So if you need someone to leave, they will give it you. It could be flat, house, hostel, or bed and breakfast. You cannot choose where you live. It's unlikely you get to live in London or South East England. You'll usually get £49.18 for each person in the household. This will help you pay for things you need like food, clothing and toiletries. Okay. So does that mean if you've got five children, they're going to get £49.18 for each child? Your allowance will be loaded onto a debit card. Each week, you'll be able to use the card to get cash from a cash machine. That's a good idea. If your accommodation provides your meals, you'll get £8.86 for each person in your household. So it's like if you're in a bed and breakfast or a hotel and they right, they pay, they, you get your breakfast, your lunch and your evening meal then you only get £8.86 for each person. 
So that guy who said he only has nine pounds a week, that's because he's getting his meals done. He's been giving certain meals each day. That's why. If you've been refused asylum, but you're still but you're still eligible for support, you'll be given one somewhere to live. Forty nine pound eighteen per person on a payment card for food, clothing, and toiletries. Or, pardon me, I've got a bit of trust me. Or eight pound eighty six per person if your accommodation provides your meals. You will not be given the payment card if you do not take the offer of somewhere to live. You will not be given any money. So if they refuse somewhere to live, if they offer them somewhere to live and they say, I'm not living there, they won't get nothing. Fair dues. They just take down a roof over their head. Extra money for mothers and young children. You'll get extra money to buy healthy food if you're pregnant or a mother of a child aged three or under. The amount you get will depend on your situation. So this is extra money on top of the £49.18 per person. Pregnant mother, you're getting extra payment of £5.25. Baby under one year old, £9.50. Child aged one to three, five twenty five. Right? If they're pregnant as well, you can they can apply for maternity payment. You can apply for a one off three hundred pound maternity payment if your baby is due in eleven weeks or less, or if your baby is under six months old. Hold on. Hold on. This is why we got women coming over here who are pregnant. <laughs> this. Right, okay. They've not paid anything into the NHS or anything, but they can get that maternity payment. Okay. You apply for the maternity grant in the same way, whether you're still an asylum seeker or you're being refused asylum. Okay. You'll need to request from MATB1 from your doctor to apply for the payment. You can apply for the maternity payment at the same time you apply for asylum support. If you get pregnant after you've applied for asylum support, you can uh, you can apply to migrant help. Let's have a look at that. You can appeal for the first tier tribunal asylum support if you've applied for asylum support and been turned down. So you can appeal against it. You were claiming asylum support and it's been stopped. So you can appeal again. You have to contact the migrant help. Okay, let's go back. If you are refused asylum, you must return to your country as soon as possible if you are refused asylum. But they don't. Because you send them a letter out stating their asylum, whatever, has been, crime has been refused. So, bump. They don't do nothing. They won't go back home. Oh, and once they have a baby over here, they can claim child support for that baby. Once you get a doctor, right, you can claim child support 
Tu vidíš celú ťa. See, healthcare, education, everything. And that's if you refused asylum as well. This doesn't make sense to me. If they refuse asylum, why don't they go knock on the door and say, here's the letter, you've been refused asylum. You need to come with us now. Take them to uh, an area, uh, a unit, right? I don't care. If they're being refused asylum, take them to this, a unit where if they want to appeal, they can. But until that appeal has been cleared one way or the other, they stay there. If it's cleared and said, yes, okay, we've you won your appeal. Fine. Let them go. Let them go and make their life. They're now a, an official citizen. You know what I mean? But when they claim, you refuse them asylum and they receive that letter, they're not going to do nothing about it. In fact, they will just move. They'll just move somewhere else where you cannot, where they cannot track them. But the problem is, it's not women and children coming over on the boat. The problem is, it's it's fighting age men. Fighting age men that are coming over. Trying to find some pictures. So it's not men and women. Yeah. Hopefully that. Look at that. Right. Look at that picture. Yes, there's some women, and there's some children, all right. But I'm going to see if I can get my phone back up on the phone. No, still charging. But men, it's fighting age men who are coming across on these boats. Very rare we are getting women and children. Right. There's a picture of one of the boats. Now let's just see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I don't even know how many there is on that boat because you've got some in the middle. But that is lying low in the water. So there's quite a few people in that boat.
But why? I still can't get over the fact that why? There's only one reason they come over and risk their lives coming over that way and paying that amount of money. And that is because they don't want their identity known. Why? Why is our government implicating the laws? Look how low that boat is in the water. Look how low it is. Yeah, give us a wave. Why not? Look, it's so low these boats are in the water because of the weight in them boats. Go back to that one. See? This was before. This is an older picture now because now the boats don't come onto the land. The boats drop out in the water and the people have to jump out the boats and wade into wade up onto the land. This was before those being stopped. The list is going back a few years. Here's a picture of a group of men trying to get in, getting into the back of a lorry. Like I said, now this is what I feel sorry for. I feel sorry for the lorry drivers. Because if they get caught with those people in their back of their lorry, they're the ones who get the fine, not these. Oh, no. In fact, if they reach the UK, these lot will just be took away, sent to a hotel, hostel, whatever, bed and breakfast. Right. Right, look at this. This is 2019, under 2,000 in a year. Under 2,000 in a year. Then we go to 2020. And went past 8,000 a year. 2021, just over 8,000 a year. Now, we're getting 700 a day. So, if you think of 700 a day, seven fives, that's 3,500. I don't know. Seven, seven, five, seven, five, so thirty-five. Yeah, so it's three thousand five hundred people a week. I think. I'm young. Let's just sort some out. <laughs> no, not that one. Not that one. Right, so look, I've got my calculator up. So say we get seven times that by seven. Mm, God. Times seven. That's 4,900 a week. Times that by 12. That's 58,800 people a year. That's how many would come into our country in a year if we had the same amount of people coming over every day. <clears throat> but I can't understand why they would... Re well, I can understand. I know why they're coming over on the boats because they want to hide their ID. Why would you pay all that money 
when you could get a flight over. Right? If you haven't got a passport, then you claim asylum in the country you're in. France isn't a bad country. I've been to France. France is lovely. They drink what they drink a lot of wine. No, it's lovely, Francis. I've been there. But we have fifty eight thousand eight hundred illegal migrants if they come in at seven hundred a day over twelve twelve months. That is gotta be stopped. I so It's just ridiculous what what we're what we are actually um even though we've got laws in place to stop this thing up are they implementing laws like swearing in public? They're implementing them laws. Right? Uh but they're not implementing the laws they've made in put into position put into place to stop the illegal migration. We we welcome migration migrants into our country legally. Legally. We get some good people we get some a lot of our doctors in our hospitals are legal migrants. Right? We get a lot of good migrants come into this country who are prepared to work, who love this country as much as we love this country. But, you know, I, I can't agree to this, Ili. Not with the amounts that are coming in. Not with the amounts that are coming in. Where are they going to house all these migrants, illegal migrants? Where? We haven't got enough hotels or bed and breakfasts for that. So, this live was mainly about just to highlight the difference between coming over on a boat or coming over on a plane. And the thing is, if you come by plane and then claim asylum, you get a screening where you get your fingerprints took, you get all your necessary paperwork looked into. You know what I mean? Legally. We don't mind that. We really don't. We don't we don't care about the colour of the skins. We just want to know where these people are coming from. We don't know nothing about these illegal immigrants. We don't know how old they are, what they're doing in the last country, why they had to leave their country. You know what I mean? We don't know nothing about them. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. And I might do a video later on if I find out any more information on this, which I am going to look into this because this isn't right. But definitely, if I wanted to come into the UK, I'd come by plane. I'd get some form of ID somehow to get a plane ticket. And flying and then claim asylum. Anyway, if you haven't already, if you're watching on replay, please give this video a like. Please share it. Please leave me a comment. And I will see you all next time. Till then, stay safe.